behind me was Greg Deerline, I'm a professor at Stanford University and the project the principal investigator of this project. And our goal here is to dramatically reduce the damage that we see in light frame residential construction under earthquakes. There's really two parts to the project. One is to create a new, what we call a unibody structural system, where we take advantage of all the walls and ceilings, creating a, in a sense a tight box to resist earthquake forces by enhancing the strength and stiffness of the walls. Um, the second part is to couple that with a low cost seismic isolation system that takes advantage of the unique characteristics of these light frame construction. I'm Eduardo Miranda. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Stanford University. I'm the co-principal investigator in this project. For houses that are located near earthquake faults, the ground motions can be extremely severe. In that case, in order to have damage-free houses, what we're doing is using seismic isolation. The idea of seismic isolation is to isolate the house from the vibration of the ground. So when the ground is moving, the house will just slide and will prevent passing earthquake forces into the house and causing damage. So the house should remain entirely damage free even under extremely severe earthquake ground motions. Conventional houses are fixed to the foundation. As the ground motion intensity increases, lateral forces in the house also increase. And they get to be so large that they will result in significant damage into the house. On the other hand, houses on seismic isolation, they're designed to have a sliding level. As the ground motion intensity increases, it will reach the sliding force level and the house will simply slide, limiting the forces that are transmitted into the house and enable it to remain damage-free even under large level earthquakes. Hi, my name is Ezra Janpel and I am a PhD candidate at Stanford University. Following the 1994 Northridge earthquake, there was $20 billion in damage to light frame structures. Additionally, there were over 60,000 displaced households. Now this takes a devastating toll on the economy. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to make houses less susceptible to costly damage from earthquakes. Our first series of tests is on a dish sliding system. In a dish sliding system, the ground will move one direction and our house will sort of stay in place. Now what makes the dish sliding system unique is that it's on a concave surface, which means that when the ground moves and we start sliding, not only are we moving the opposite direction of the ground, we're also moving up. What tends to happen is it will then come back after the earthquake due to the weight of gravity. This reduces the residual displacements to near zero. Additionally, we reduce peak displacements because we lose the temporary residuals that you might see in a system that doesn't have that restoring stiffness. At the beginning of the earthquake, the isolator will start in the middle, but then when the earthquake comes, it will start sliding back and forth and eventually come back to the middle at the end of the earthquake. Hi, I'm Carlos McHenry. I'm an undergraduate student at Cal Poly Pomona. This summer, I've been a research intern on this project, and one of the tasks that I had was to design a flexible utility connection for the base isolated house. Typically in residential construction, you have a rigid connection. And since our house will have relative movement with the ground, we want to design this connection to accommodate plus or minus 15 inches of movement. I will demonstrate the flexible utility connection concept with this small cable. Imagine that this end of the cable is connected to the ground, this end of the cable is connected to the house. The pipes will be orientated, oriented in a loop configuration, and if the ground moves one way, the pipe will be able to flex. And this is what we will be experiencing at NISA at UCSD. In reality, ground motions will move in two directions. So the pipe was actually designed for movements 
in this direction as well as this direction and could accommodate both at the same time. This is the sequence that a base isolated house would follow. First you would build the isolators and then you would start to build an isolation plane or first floor on top of the isolators. Once that level is completed you would build the house on top of this isolation plane just like you would on top of a slab on grade. These are some photographs of the construction of the isolation system of this first floor, details of the isolation system, and these are details of the flexible utilities. and of the construction of the house. Five, four, three, two, one, running. Science Foundation through their NEES program, Network for Earthquake Engi Engineering Simulation. Through that, we got the opportunity to conduct large-scale tests at the Shake Table facility here at the University of San Diego, and also in the, in the laboratory up NEES laboratory up at UC Berkeley. Uh, in addition to the, our own project team, we benefited by having a number of uh, industry collaborators, professional structural engineers, earthquake engineers, who worked closely with us. Uh, we've also had a great group of students, undergraduate interns. Uh, staff at the various laboratories I mentioned, uh, and others who've contributed to the project. Uh, and finally, industry stepped up and given a number of material donations that have helped offset the costs of these large-scale tests.